In this experiment, we're going to be creating a small-scale hydroelectric power generating station. Before we begin, please make sure to wear all your proper PPE, including safety glasses and any other equipment that your instructor requires. And please remember to clean and disinfect all your equipment before and after use. By now, you should have reviewed the instructions for the lab, so I'm just going to walk through the setup here, and then you can go ahead and run the experiment for yourself. In front of us, we have our stand, and on the stand, we have a column of water between 600 and 800 milliliters connected to a hose, which goes down to a turbine, which is connected to our energy transfer generator. Below that, we have a beaker to collect the water. And from the generator, we have our resistor connected to the voltage sensor on our GLX. We also have a multimeter because we're going to have to measure the resistance on that resistor and then a ruler or a tape measure to measure the column of water at different stages. That's it for the entire setup. After that, you can go ahead and perform the experiment. Before you begin the actual experiment, there's a few other things that you're going to need to take care of to make sure that you have everything timed properly. Before you fill up your water column, make sure that you have closed the hose clamp because we don't want any water traveling through there until we're ready to go. Set up your GLX to track your voltage and measure the resistance across the resistor. If you need a reminder on how to measure the resistance or how to operate the GLX, I'll, I'll set, put up a link to a previous video where we go through those in more detail. Once your GLX is set up and once your resistance is measured, you're gonna need to have probably two to three people. You're gonna need one person to do some timing, another person to operate the GLX, and maybe a third person to open up the water valve. Once you are ready to go, make sure again that this is closed and just check, open and close it a couple times and make sure it hasn't pinched the line. Um, and if it has, just kind of massage it so that you know that the line is open. It, it, once it's closed, fill up with your water and then place your beaker below the turbine. A nice thing to keep in mind is once you have your beaker underneath there, you might want to lower this slightly so that the water going through the turbine doesn't splash all over your table because once it gets moving through there, it's going to go pretty quickly. Another thing to check before you start is that your nozzle is lined up horizontally with the turbine so that you don't have, again, water shooting off to the side. You want to have a nice stream going through there to turn your turbine. When you're ready to go, you have your operator hitting the check mark to, or sorry, the play button to go on the GLX. You have somebody ready to start timing and you have a person that opens up our water valve and the water will start flowing and it will start recording on our GLX. couple more pointers before you begin. Once you have your water all filled up, and of course you have this closed, you're going to need to note the level of the water off the graduated cylinder. You're also going to have to measure the height between the outlet of the cylinder and the center line of your turbine or the nozzle down here. You need to measure that height. Make sure to note those before you begin. Other things to keep in mind when this is actually operating it's going to spin the turbine, but it's also going to spin this top device here. Make sure you see that piece spinning. If it's not spinning, stop your experiment and make some adjustments. Maybe it's not um, connected properly to the turbine. Uh, if it still doesn't work, you can try turning this horizontally and run the experiment like this. Just be careful to catch your water because it's going to spray a lot more. Um, so depending on the energy transfer generator you're using, uh, you may have more success horizontal versus vertical. But once it's operating, um, as long as you see this device spinning, you should see readings coming up on your voltage. Now that you're ready to proceed with the experiment, the last thing to keep in mind is that you don't want to completely empty this cylinder. So pick a target, probably 100 milliliters, so that as the water's dropping down, as soon as it hits the 100 milliliters mark, you're going to close your, your switch here, and you're going to stop your voltage readings and your stopwatch so that you have a, a pretty good idea of what the volume of water used was. You'll know what your initial value was and you'll know what your final value is and you'll be able to figure out how much water was used for the experiment. And by timing your start and stop to the operation of this, you'll be able to get good accurate readings. Speaking of which, this is best done with three people, one on the stopwatch, one on the GLX and one on here. So if you have three people, that would be the best way to operate it. If not, do your best to run everything simultaneously. As soon as this gets open, you want to start your stopwatch and you want to start your voltage readings. And as soon as it's closed, you want to stop the other devices. 
I'm going to hit my stopwatch and I'm going to start my voltage meter as soon as I open this up. The water is flowing. This is spinning. Everything seems to be working. I'm going to wait till this gets down to 100 and then I'm going to stop the water flow and stop my readings. Everything is stopped. Once you've finished the experiment, you can go into the stats on here and figure out what your maximum value for the voltage is. It could either be on the minimum or the maximum. We're, we're looking at the maximum magnitude value and you're going to record that information. Of course, you're going to note down the time that it took and then you can continue on with the rest of the experiment. That completes the experiment. That should be everything that you need to be able to go ahead and finish off everything else with the lab. If you have any further questions, please contact your instructor.